I've been keeping a secret from you guys, and it's eating me up inside. So today, we're gonna reveal it. Yeah. Yeah, it's been there the whole time. Let's go have a look. Well, okay, so welcome to the yurt. I do apologize for taking so long to uh, introduce you to our uh, larger dwelling on the property, but uh, I had uh, lots, to, uh, lots to talk about with the tiny cabin and uh, figured I'd get through a, a bunch of that stuff first before we got to this project. So uh, this is the yurt. Uh, this is a 26 foot in diameter, uh, seven walled yurt. Uh, this is a traditional Mongolian yurt, uh, actually from Mongolia, um, handcrafted by a family there, um, and uh, they work with a company called Groovy Yurts uh, out of um, Ontario, Quebec area to import these and, and to, uh, they work together to sell these in North America and, and work with these. So that's what we've got here is a seven walled Groovy Yurt. Um, and uh, the story, uh, how, how it came to be ours, is a longer one. I can tell that sometime, but um, maybe we should uh, have a little tour of the yurt first, uh, the different areas, and talk a little bit about the traditions of the yurt and, and some of the uh, customs that go along with it. So, so let's do that. Let's uh, have a little tour, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about the yurt as we go through it. So when you enter a yurt, you must be wary not to step on the threshold. The threshold is sacred. It holds the spirits of your ancestors, so you don't want to step on them. And we typically enter with our right foot first. The other tradition when uh, entering a yurt is to enter and move clockwise around the room, as opposed to the other way around. And uh, so we try and honor that as much as possible, but sometimes make a beeline straight across as well. <laughs> So as I say, uh, when you enter a yurt, you uh, enter in a clockwise fashion, and so we'll begin our tour just left of the door in the kitchen. Uh, so this is our little kitchen area, and uh, it's fairly simple and basic, but we've got a full-size, small, but full-size dining room table with four chairs, a little expanding thing in the middle. It's just like a real home. Uh, so no more eating off of uh, TV trays and things like that. Uh, this, uh, this is a full-size table and, and that's really nice when you've got a, a bunch of people over for dinner. Not have to eat out of your laps anymore. Um, this unit here is just an old antique uh, Houvier, um, Hoosier, 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 uh, I don't know how do you say it. Anyway, one of those old uh, cabinets where you can keep your flour and food and all sorts of stuff in there and you've got this uh, top for uh, kneading bread and, and whatever else you need. So we got that for a, a great price from a little old lady uh, along with another piece I'll show you later uh, in our hometown. And then we've got a little counter here. And the counter has a uh, double um, ceramic uh, or enamel sink. And then our, um, just our two burner stove uh, that runs propane outside to a tank that's outside. And then a shelving unit with some cups and things like that and our, and our uh, uh, coffee on it and things like that. So we've got our, all of our cutlery in this drawer um, and that sort of thing. Now we do tend to cook up at the, um, up at the uh, camper for most of the summer. Uh, just because the bears are awake, we don't want to do a whole lot of bacon in here and have it smelling like bacon. Uh, the walls are just fabric and felt, and so it does absorb smell fairly quickly and fairly easily and hold on to it. 
So we do most of our cooking up at the uh, camper for the winter or for the summertime while the bears are awake. And then we move things down here in the winter time when uh, uh, when the camper gets you know winterized and we put all the stuff in the lines and things like that so it don't freeze antifreeze in the lines and stuff like that. So when we winterize the camp and put it away camper and put it away for the season, then we start to cook down here. But by then the bears are well sleeping and and not usually an issue anymore. So. Uh, we try and keep food down here to a minimum in the summer, but that's our little kitchen area, and um, it serves us pretty well. So the second area in the yurt is the bedding area. We have three beds, one queen-size bed. Yes, a full queen-size bed. So much space in here. It's amazing compared to the tiny cabin. So one full-size queen bed and uh, two twin mattresses. The frames or the bed uh, frames are just built from material that I was scrapped from the deck underneath the yurt. So that's just all uh, scrap material that was left over. And I just built the bed frames and then the, uh, the mattresses are just sitting on top of that. So not a lot of expense there, but fairly simple. Uh, we tried to save some space by having the boys' beds sideways up against the walls and uh, our bed comes out and uh, the uh, wood stove, we can turn the eco fans towards us and blow that warm air back into this area uh, in the evening and blows out that way during the day. So yeah, it works fairly well. And um, although the beds take up a good amount of space in here, uh, there's lots to spare and it's nice to separate the boys when they're arguing and, and that sort of thing as well. So bedding area, there it is. So after the beds, the next thing on the clockwise tour is the washroom. So we've just got a couple of little false walls built um, just to create a little privacy. We got a little light in here and everything. So in the bathroom, uh, we've got the same bucket set up as uh, in the tiny cabin. Uh, so just number ones in here for the night times. And then I've got uh, the solar system uh, electrical stuff set up in here as well. So we've got a solar system in here that I can go through in detail in another video. And uh, that keeps all of our lights on. We've got a few lights in here uh, in the living room and in the kitchen. And then a couple in here. Uh, toiletries up on a shelf there. Little rag for drying your hands off and that sort of thing. So that's the bathroom. Fairly simple design and then we've just got a little draw curtain for privacy and then we move into the living room area so in the living room we've got a nice cozy uh, chair uh, that we hide dirty laundry behind and uh, this bureau here uh, that I had mentioned earlier uh, where we keep all of our linens and clothes when we're here for a good long time so if we're here for a couple of weeks, like we are in the summer right now, uh, we'll, uh, we'll fill that wardrobe full of clothes and things like that. And we've got a nice big long standing mirror, our old couch from our old house in the city, and then a shelf up on top, and the shelf just has a whole bunch of outdoorsy books and uh, things like that, things for kids to do, and games and some DVDs and a tiny little DVD player if it's really raining for a long time, but lots of board games, crafting supplies and things like that. So lots of stuff for kids to keep busy with. And then we're back to the front door. And the doors of the yurt are kind of a two-piece deal. We've got these uh, split doors which open inwards like that. And then there is a storm door as well, which closes from the outside in inclement weather. Just like that. Now it keeps quite a bit of light out as well. So it's pretty easy to sleep in in a yurt. It's pretty cozy and warm in there, like a big blanky fort. And once all the lights cut out with those doors closed, who could tell what time of day it is?
Well, secret's out and I feel better. So in the future, we'll do some more videos about uh, the specific uh, pieces of the Mongolian gear and maybe more about where it uh, comes from and, and its origins. Uh, the story of how we got it is yet to come. Uh, and we'll also talk about some of the details and features inside, like the solar system and, and some of the actual uh, construction pieces of it and, and uh, maybe even show you some of uh, the pictures of us putting it up. So keep, uh, keep tuned for some more videos. Subscribe and like this one if uh, this is the kind of thing you're into. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.